Hi everyone, it's Tom Chapman again. Welcome to part seven of my map tool tutorial where we talk about setting up a new map and importing a map image from a PDF or from the internet. Before I get into the video itself though, I wanted to apologize for my last few videos. I set the aspect ratio incorrect for when I save them, but from this video forward, I have the correct aspect for viewing it on YouTube. So before we get into this new stuff, let me cover everything that I've done so far. In my first video, I talked about how to set up a narrative flow so that you kind of have a flow chart. And I set it up in this adventure all the way to where we start to enter the dungeon. I copied my single handout, this town map. I also imported a world map from another campaign that I've done. I imported a map of Nermothus which is where Kesson, the location of this adventure, is. Uh, I have also done this. There's another image in the PDF of the town of Kesson that I put in here that I will label later. I imported this map from another instance of map tool, and I also imported this map too, which are all in part one of the adventure. So today, I have two more maps that need to be taken from this adventure, the Crypt of the Everflame. So these maps are located towards the beginning of this adventure. So we have the upper level of the Crypt of the Everflame, and then later on we have the lower level. So what I need is, for this, I just need to get this map and put it in a map tool. So to get started on that, I'm just going to do snapshot. And I'm going to just click on that. And if you just click on a page, it copies the entire page. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to zoom in to 400%. And I'm going to copy. Go over to an instance of paint, where I already have the town of Kesson from what I just did. And I'm going to paste over it. And now I have, whoa, I was zoomed in too much. That didn't work. Here's what I actually want. Now I have this entire map. Now the issue is, is if the players are going to be seeing this map, we've got a few issues. If I zoom in here to area two, I have a whole bunch of trap uh, floors. And they can know about the S, the S's are switches, but I've got these trap floors. And then over here, I've got another trap to spring right here. So here's what I do to make this work. Let's do this one first. So I have this trap right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to steal from paint. I'm going to zoom in, click and copy, click and drag, and I'm going to select this form, hit Control C. Scroll down, hit Control V, and I'm just going to drag this image and put it over the trap door. Now it doesn't match up perfect, but when the players are looking at this from far enough away, they actually don't notice it. And I've never had anybody go, oh, what's that weird colored square? Because when we zoom out, the tile's right there, but it looks pretty close to everything else. So that one was easy. Over here is going to be a little trickier. This one's not going to be as easy to do. So I'm going to go through one at a time. I'm going to get rid of these trap doors here. Now, again, these are going to look pretty, pretty poor compared to um, the one I just did. But I'm going to take that one. That one looks pretty close. Control V. Put it over that. Good enough for that. Uh, I think I'll take this one. This one looks pretty close. Control C. Put it over this. And I'm going to do that for the rest of them too. So I'll just do that real quick. This one will work for both here and here. Making sure not to cover up this skull or rock or whatever it is too much. And I got two more. I'll take this square, put it here, and this last one is pretty dark, or this next one's pretty dark. I don't really have a good one for that. This one's pretty close though. I'm going to take this dark corner, make sure I don't copy as much. Cover that up. Doesn't look as good, but again, no one's probably going to notice that. Um, let's take this square to cover this one, and I'm just going to hit Control-V again. I'm going to cover this one too. 
and I'll cover up that. So now, when I zoom out, you actually can't tell. So I've got that in here. Let's control S it, save it as untitled. So now I have my map that my players are going to use. Now what I need to do next is I'm in my instance of map tool and I need to put a new place for this. So I'm going to first check. I'm at 003. So I'll go to map, new map, name it first. So this is 004 and this is the upper level. I'm going to change my background to black because they won't see much of it. And distance, vision, all that looks good. Click OK. Now what I need to do next is I need to set the layer. Next what I need to do is I need to set the layer. This is a map. This is what all the action is going to take place on. So I need to set this as the background layer. So I'm going to click background. I'm going to go to my desktop. There's my token right there, or my image file. I'm going to drag it to Map Tool and just drop it. Take a moment, get it all settled in, kind of put it at zero, zero, wait for it to see if it snaps or glitches or anything, and we're pretty good. We've got that done. And there we go. I have my map. That's in there. The problem that I'm going to have, though, is that I do not have uh, my secret doors or anything. So this, I, I can't see anything on this. This doesn't help me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to paint and I'm going to undo everything I just did. Oops, too far. And now I have my trap doors back in here all over the place. I'm going to hit Control S again, save it, minimize, Take this, I'm going to drag this here, and I'll show you why I do this in just a moment. Let that show up, and we're good to go. As I spoke about before, we can see there's a grid built into this map, and Paizo maps are great about this. If you use a grid, they, they do a really good job of making sure that their grid lines are consistent and perfect, and I love that. But I need to be able to see my grid, and I need to set the grid up and align the grid in Map Tool with the grid in my map. So I'm going to hit Control G. Okay, the first thing I see is that my Map Tool grid is way too small. That is far too small for me to use because it almost looks like three and a half grid squares fit onto the map's one grid square. So to edit the grid, I'm going to hit Control Shift A. Again, Control Shift A. And it gives me a whole bunch of things. I can set the X, Y axis offset, the grid size, um, how big, oh, how I zoom in, that's what that is, and the color. Now, I'm going to stay with black for the color. The black's a pretty good color. Now, when we're in the adjusting grid, which again is Control Shift A, when we're in here, the controls change a little bit. So I can still right click and drag, but when I zoom in and out now, I can change the size of the grid. So what I need to do is I need to make these grids a lot bigger. So I'm going to make them bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm mouse wheeling down. And if I make it too big, I just, like I have already, I just zoom back in and push mouse wheel up. Now you're noticing that I'm adjusting the grid now without moving the map. That's just left click and drag. So to move the grid without the map, left click and drag. To move the grid and the map and explore around, right click and drag. What I usually do to make sure that the grid lines up with the map is I pick a, I pick a square where I know it's lining up. So if I look right here, this grid line and this grid line, the X grid line and the Y grid line are lining up perfectly right here. But if I go over, as soon as I get here, the grid line's not lining up. So what this tells me is my map tool grid is bigger than my map grid. And they even have it in here, so that helps too. So I need to make this smaller. So I'm going to mouse wheel in, realign, and actually, that's perfect. I just realigned it, and I'm going to check down here to make sure it's aligned down here. And overall, if I hit close, if I turn off my grid and then turn it back on, it's pretty close to aligned. It's a little off down here but not enough for me to worry about. If I want to adjust the map, I might click 
on the background, select my map icon, and maybe drag it and resize it just a bit, and double check, and there we go. I've set my map background. Now this is what the players see. So I right click, this is player visible, and this is the map I see. Now I need to make these two maps line up as far as size goes. So I'm gonna first zoom in here and make sure that they're the same size there. And then I'll drag it over here and make sure they're the same size roughly there. And they're pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is I have my GM map that I'm now going to right click on and say, this is not visible to players. Now this is cool. So what this means is if I put this map on top of the other map, the players will see their map, but I will see my map. Now what I need to do, if you notice, when I clicked and dragged my GM map over, right now it's above and it went behind it. I don't want it there. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm going to go to arrange and I'm gonna bring it to front. And so now that's on top. I just now need to bring this map over here and align it somewhat and not mess with my grid. My grid is set and now I have my GM map on top of my player map. And just to check to make sure that I see this and my player sees something else, I'm going to go up to view and do show as player. Now it doesn't line up perfectly. Actually, it's pretty close. So I'm not going to worry about it at all. So I'm going to go to my GM view, and there is this map. So I have that done, and now I need to do my next layer. So I'm on map 004, the upper level. I need to make a new map that is 005, the lower level. Click on background, make it black, OK. Everything else is good because it's defaulted the way I want it. And I just come back here, zoom out a lot, and find my next map. Which I honestly can't remember where it is in this one. I think it's right before part two. So I'm scrolling. Ah, here it is. So I've got this map. It's a little different size, but I'm going to click, select the whole page, zoom into 400, right click. Copy and whoops, go to paint and control V. So this map's going to be smaller, but really, in the terms of this program, that doesn't matter all that much. So I need to edit this down. I'm going to hit control A, which selects the entire image, and I'm going to drag it up into this corner until I see no white along the top or the left. Now I'm going to edit this side, bring it in until it's over that. Drag this bottom white square until I cover that. And now I have my map image. Zoom in. And I have one trap in here. Only one thing should not be viewed by the players. All right, so I got to deal with that. So I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to select right. I'm not going to select the entire thing. I'm going to select right here. Control copy, control V, so control C, then control V, and paste that right there. And I'll do one more of the exact same one, and I'll paste that right there. Again, it's not going to look perfect, but now that I'm done, you, can, you can't even tell that I did that unless you were specifically looking for it. And let's be honest, when players start looking at maps like this, they're looking at these two st statues and these two pits on this side, and they're not looking for the trip plate, which is right there. So I got that done. Control S to save. Go to Map Tool. Make sure I'm selecting the background layer. Go to my desktop. And now, Untitled, drag it to Map Tool, and place it here. Put it in this upper corner. Make this one visible to players. Oh, see, there it glitched and snapped again. Put this back where it belongs. It is visible to players. Go back to paint. Control Z, Control Z, and here is my GM map. 
minimize, click, drag, and place. And to do it again, I need to line up my grid with my map. So control shift A, and I need to make this way bigger. So I'm gonna scroll out, roll out, roll out, roll out, line up, very good options for lining up in this room, but I'm gonna line up this square. And if I look here, it looks okay. But by this point, you can tell that my squares are too small. My map tool grid is too small. So I'm gonna make it bigger, realign it, make it bigger and that may be it oh now it's too big you can see it over here click it in one realign hmm if i come down here it's kind of what i thought this map is too big for the grid so this happens sometimes where my map itself the map that i have selected here is of a size that is in between grid sizes for map tools. So I'm going to click on this, I'm going to drag that square to the left. Now I've got my Y axis, my up and down axis aligned. And I'm going to click it and drag it up like that. And now my X axis is aligned. Double check it. And there we go. Control S, and now this grid is aligned. I've got my player map here, my GM map here, Oops, wrong layer, background. If I drag it over, I have my GM map on top, make it not visible to players. And now I just need to align it and zoom in, change the size of, oops, change the wrong map's size. Now I have a problem because I selected the wrong map. So now I gotta redo this one. Now I'll put this one back over it. The one inconvenient thing is that you can't see your grid when you're dragging a map, a background layer map. So. That looks pretty good. It's a little off center up here. I gotta tell you that doing the grid for a map can often be the most time consuming thing that I do because it can be kind of finicky making sure that layers line up with each other. All right, there we go. Now I am done, save my campaign so I don't have to redo that. And those are both of the maps that I need for Crypt of the Everflame. What I'm not gonna cover right now though is how to take a map that you find on the internet and put it into map tool. The process is similar, but all we need to do at the beginning is to right click on an image and save it somewhere on our computer. Then when we find where we saved our image, we just do the same process. We drag and drop it onto the background layer. What I'm not gonna cover in this video is I'm not gonna cover vision blocking or fog of war or how to draw your own maps in this program. I'll leave those for later, later videos. So for right now, that has been setting up and putting in a new map and map tool. And I look forward to seeing you in part eight. Thank you very much for watching.